Hey. Hey. How are you? Hey. I'm good. How are you? I'm good. I'm great. Yeah. So, um, thank you so much. Wow. For doing, it's, yeah. it's very, very nice. Yeah. Thank you so much for doing this. You're so welcome. You're so welcome. Yeah. So, um, how are you? It's been a long time, right? You last time I saw you is in Thailand, uh, around 2019, right? Yes. 2019. So it's been it's been more than two years now. <clears throat> wow. Yeah. Yeah. So I think right. early, early or middle of 2019, and we we have a gig together. I think at Fujian. Yes. Yeah. Fujian. Oh yeah, I I remember that. And one in Brown Sugar. Yeah, 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 yeah. And I remember that I enjoyed. Yeah, they see so much yeah, yeah, after yeah. that, right? Yeah. So, and then, yeah, tell me, um, tell me about um, your experience with um, COVID situation on since the, I think, early 2020, oh. right? Sure, sure. Um. I think every musician would be the same. Um, we have a couple of problems, like firstly, income, uh, especially for uh, those of who support themselves by from gig to gig. Mm -hmm. um, we had a serious problem with booking gigs, of course, because they went in the air. We are, I mean, um, kind of off the books all mm -hmm. at once, right? Mm -hmm. So uh, for a long time, we didn't even dare to start something. But so the, so as it's, time um, went by, we the, kind of... Yeah, the, it's, it's, uh, when the first web hit um, South Korea, is uh, the government order you to, mm -hmm. to, like they have a curfew or they they forced you to do something. What happened in South Korea by the first wave? Oh, we were um we were not completely locked down, mm -hmm. but we were trying to the government Korean government um was trying to control the situation. I mean, so hard. So it was not that bad. We were not in a very um, dangerous situation here, but still, this gigs and performing thing had to cancel mm -hmm. everything, right? So yeah, yeah, that's happened it everywhere. It's not easy for everyone. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then. So I'm kind of safe. And every but month, my gigs yeah. are not safe. <laughs> yeah, of course. And all the gig is gone, <laughs> right? Yeah. So from then, from from early two thousand twenty until now, is anything getting better? Mm -hmm. Oh, oh. Uh, starting in this, we are trying to do something. Because um, now we know that um, the gathering is a, would be a problem, mm -hmm. but gathering itself would not be a very, I mean, critical problem, right? Mm -hmm. So we know how to be careful mm -hmm. and how to not to um, spread this disease, I mean, more than um, it should be, right? <laughs> Because in the beginning, we didn't have any information about that. So uh, we didn't know what we can do and what we cannot do. But mm -hmm. for now, we know the uh, situation kind of well. So we are trying to um, 
wear masks all the time. I mean, from the beginning to the end of the gigs. Mm -hmm. So through the whole concert, audiences are wearing masks and the staffs are also, and we don't eat something, even mm -hmm. though um, it's, uh, it used to be allowed. Mm -hmm. So we are trying and it's mm -hmm. getting better and better, but still not like it used to be. Yeah, of course, of course, yeah. How about there? How about there? Well, Do you guys play? Um, it's getting um, in and out. Um, the first wave hit and then yeah. we we have to lock down for a couple of months and then we reopen mm -hmm. again. We, yeah, we reopened okay. again last, uh, I think a few months and then on the new years, the second wave hit and then we have to stop. Oh, I mean, okay. New Year gigs is gone. Everything. Yeah. Oh, see. Yeah. And I then see. after January, mm -hmm. nothing getting, it's still like the whole January is closed. And then we reopen around February again. Yeah. And then now last, oh. yeah. And then now, uh, in the middle of April, the third wave hits, and then now we, every everywhere is closed again, and now the, we have a new strain okay. of virus, the one from uh, England, which is spreading faster and faster. Now the the infected people right is rising up. You see that? Oh yeah. Yeah. So um what happened is uh, right now the, the situation is not good. But look into the bright side. <laughs> I know, I know. I, I'm I was so glad when I heard for, heard this about this project from you. Yeah, yeah. Because I know I mean, the jazz clubs are closing everywhere, even in New York, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. if there's anything we can do to help it out, I'm mm -hmm. more than willing to be part of it. Yeah. So um, what are you um, what are you doing right now? Do you have any cur current project? Do you have any, you know, doing some recording session or anything? Okay. Yeah. Oh, sure. Um, actually, I'm playing um, one or two times a week. Oh, that's great. So there are gigs. Yeah, that's great. And I'm very grateful. And um, but it's not like it used to be mm -hmm, because of course. around this time, usually I play every day, of course. Mm -hmm. And um, I'm recording. Actually, I've released one album this January, and mm -hmm. we've composed mm -hmm. and conceived this album uh, through COVID nineteen crisis. Mm -hmm. So uh, we will we recorded and released it, mm -hmm. and we had um, some kind of jazz process jazz festival in here because mm -hmm. every festival every music festival has canceled of mm -hmm. course mm -hmm. but there was one jazz festival they tried to um do it simultaneously i mean um online and offline so mm -hmm. we gathered only 20 audience mm -hmm. at the place and then they streamed it online ah. so we had that too, and I, so it'll come out soon. Yeah, because great. we have so many times. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sound great. <laughs> so, do you do you already got the vaccine, or um, your friend already got the vaccine? No, no, not yet, not yet. How I is want the, it. How is the vaccine situation in South Korea? 
not very good. <laughs> mm -hmm. So they are trying to um, vaccinate elderly people first, of course, because they are vulnerable uh -huh. to this situation. And um, we are not yet. Mm. I'm waiting. How about you? Did you? Well, the, no, not yet. In Thailand, it's very slow too. Oh, I see. Yeah. Oh. Um, because we didn't we didn't um, <laughs> produce it, so you know we have to buy it. Yeah. Most of my friend in the state we have already, to buy it from the other countries. Yeah. Most of my friend sure. in the state is already got um, the second shot. Yeah. <gasps> second shot. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, how about uh, how about you? Do you play? Well, um, not currently, um, because um, everywhere is now people not traveling a lot, and from the situation is <laughs> might getting worse. So. Oh. We have wow. to really? we have to be careful. Um, yeah. Mm. yeah. Oh, we are kind of similar uh, situation, I guess, because um, sometimes it got a little better mm -hmm. and it gets worse. Mm -hmm. So back and forth, and yeah. we are tr we are waiting for a vaccine. <laughs> yeah. 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 Repeating this. Yeah. So um, I, I, I mentioned about, um, uh, you, um, I asked you for maybe some footage or some video from your performance. Would you um, be able to say oh, anything? Yeah. Which one you're gonna send us? Oh, the video that I will yeah. um, share yeah. with you that I want to share with you guys in Thailand is yeah. uh, the, the pop, performance that we played in the jazz, in that jazz festival that I told you okay. a minute ago. Yeah. So there was a very good one and um, we composed a song, actually what my pianist, the pianist in my band mm -hmm. composed that song mm -hmm. and I wrote the lyrics and we kind of uh, firstly played it in that festival in front of people because we know that we need those kind of moments before we really get to record the song. Yeah. So the title is uh, Dream of You. Uh -huh. And uh, it's about a dream of somebody that I loved. <laughs> Good. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So um, last question. Um, so. Um, sure. Maybe, maybe this one is for you know your fellow our fellow jazz musician um could you say or comment something about this covid situation how we should deal with it how should we look at it you know you have any advice or comments oh right right um uh, through this crisis uh the thing that left in my mind the most is the appreciation, of course. Um, we don't play much, of course, but whenever we get to play in front of real people, that in front of camera, we can feel that we appreciate that and the audience also really, really appreciate that. They don't just come out and enjoy couple hours, they kind of really wait for that, wait for the music and the words and something that can comfort them. So um, I think um, for as a musician, for us, this crisis um, somehow helps us out to think about um, the quality of our sound, of the music, music, that's of course a part of music, the sound, but it's not the everyday situation. We cannot, we can, we can share this sound together. 
we are musicians and the audience, we are at the same place and we share this place and atmosphere, most of all the sound. So this um, kind of uh, gave me a little different aspect to music and the performance. It's really um, important to you be there and audiences are here. And uh, we create this moment all together. Of course, I, I think every, everyone, know, everyone knows this. We knew this even before this COVID situation, but I didn't really appreciate that uh, thoughts before this. So um, this thing will be ended eventually, will pass away. Pass away? Is this the right term? Yeah, <laughs> it will, will, it will pass. Right? Yeah, it really did. yeah, it's will it getting has. better. Yeah, yeah we, it, it'll get better eventually. Yeah. Right. But um, by that time, um, we kind of, we, we need to survive this situation, but mm -hmm. Um, we, we are just not staying here, waiting for the other moment to just um, make another sound or make mm -hmm. another music that we used to play. Mm -hmm. Just um, we kind of condense this thoughts and sound and everything. And uh, um, we just um, wait for the moment that we are prepared and the audiences are prepared for that moment and then we will, when we share that, the joy of it will be so much better than ever. That's what I think. Oh. And that's what I that, that's what I am experiencing in Korea. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's that's good comment. And I'm, yeah. yeah. I'm dying to go to EIJC <laughs> because that's a <laughs> Yeah, next year. That's next year. The, I mean, greatest next year for sure. You do that, right? Yeah, I, I, we we wish, we hope. Yeah. Sure, sure. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Thank you so much, Ash, for helping us. You know. Thank you so much for inviting me. Yeah. All right. So. Um, I'll see you around.
been a while i was trying to think of the last time we uh we talked or i saw you it's it's been a long time yeah yeah 2017 yeah. 18 i think yeah yeah, yeah that's yeah. Sounds, sounds about right yeah so when when did you finish miami um i graduated in 2016 from miami uh, um but i you know I, came I, still, back. I still see you around yeah i came back a few times i think i i came back um I came back and played on like Kyle Swan's uh, recital for yeah. his masters. Um, I came back a couple other times too. Cause I, I think I was playing with like David and uh, David Leon and Jonah. Yeah, yeah. You know, uh, so now, so, yeah. So now you move back to Washington DC. So yeah, I'm in, I'm in uh, Washington DC now. Um, ah. I am now uh, in the U S army blues. Um, oh. What is yeah. that? So it's um, one of the, it's, it's a part of um, the Pershing's own U.S. Army Band, which is the, kind of the main um, army band in D.C. And uh, it's the jazz big band part of it. Ah. Uh, yeah, so I auditioned in uh, last January, Jan so that would January 2020. <laughs> and uh i got offered the the position and i i ended up accepting it and then um before i before i joined or before i came here i had to like do the whole uh army basic training yeah yeah so you have to do a six month or a year basic training uh actually it's only about three months it's only, ah. it's 10, 10 weeks i was there for about 12 weeks yeah um because covid kind of messed everything up Ah, uh, I see. So, yeah, would so you the, could you could you tell us from the so you you got ex, you enroll in uh, around January two thousand twenty, right? Yes, that's when I auditioned. Yeah, um, and then after that, the COVID came. Exactly. <laughs> um, yeah, it was crazy. So I was supposed to go to basic training in uh, March, uh -huh. but, but obviously March is when everything you know shut down and like it really got, got crazy. So. They actually delayed. They pushed back my start date wow. um, by like a couple months. So I didn't go to basic training until the end of May, mm -hmm. um, and yeah, and then about mid August, I got uh, I got here. I got I finished, and they you know sent me here, and so I've been here. I guess how many months is that now? Over over six months, eight eight months or something like that. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so that's. That's uh, that's what's new with me. And I was living, uh, I was living in New York um, before this. You know, I, mm -hmm. I was there for about like four years. Because right, right I mean, I mean, DC and New York is very close. Yeah, that's kind of a good thing. Yeah, it's yeah. you know, um, I mean, there's not a ton happening right now. But but if but, if you cannot travel, it's still not close, like four hours or something, right? Yeah. Yeah. yeah exactly. Yeah. Yeah. But um, yeah, maybe one hour flying, or you know. 
Yeah, it's it, there's you know you could fly, which would be a quick flight. There's the Amtrak, which is quicker than four. Uh, it's probably like a little over three. Mm -hmm. So there's there's some. It's definitely possible to get back and forth. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah, pretty quickly. So yeah, so yeah. so that's like um. So how is the your music scene? Are you still playing gigs and all that? If you have to be in the army. Um, well, so yes, I am. Um, we, my, my job is basically, you know, we rehearse and we perform, um, we do some educational things. Um, you know, I also have to play like, um, I, I have to sub and play like military funerals and stuff. Um, but for the most part, my job is just to kind of rehearse and perform with the, with the big band. Um, there are no limitations on doing gigs outside of that. Oh. Um, so yeah i mean but how how is the gig in dc after um last year right after the COVID started well that's a I, see i i feel like i actually don't know a ton about the dc scene yet yeah because of COVID. you know i've been yeah. here a while now but there's not a ton going on i mm -hmm. you know i i think there's a there's been a few clubs here in the area that have kind of closed or they're temporarily closing and trying to reopen Mm -hmm. um but i honestly i haven't i haven't really been out um to go try to see live music or anything i've pretty mm -hmm. much just been kind of is there any nervous. any limits on you like cannot go somewhere or you have to um be safe just just wear masks and go out right in dc right now it, um in dc they're not really um I mean, not as far as like, like certain areas of DC, like, no, I don't think so. You know, the army kind of tells me like, or tell, it's kind of a rule that I can't, uh, if, if I'm traveling like far away from DC, like, like if I have a weekend off and I'm going to, if I go to, you know, New York or actually it would have to be farther than New York. Um, if you go to back to Miami or something. Sure. If I, if I wanted to take a vacation and go back to Miami or something like that, I would have to be in quarantine for two weeks before I could come back into work. Wow. Um, yeah. But they're, they're not. And I think right now they're, you know, the, no international travel really still. Um, you, you already but, got the shot or something? So, uh, yes. So I've, I've gotten the first vaccine. So I'm uh -huh. waiting for the second. Which one, do you, second. which one do you have? Which one you got? Uh, uh, it was Moderna. Ah, Moderna. Yeah. So yeah. How, how about you? How's, how's the vaccination? Um, the so vaccination in Thailand is very slow. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Very slow. Um, we're not, um, we're not the country that produces a vaccine. So that's, you know, that's understandable. We wait. Yeah. We got to wait. Sure. Yeah. Well, it's coming though. That's, so that's good. Yeah. <laughs> I hope. Yeah. I hope. We hope. Yeah. I mean, um, everything has been slow and now it's the third wave is, you know, hitting us and the, the, the infected people still rising in Thailand. Mm. Okay, yeah. got it. Yeah, so yes. everything still have to be closed, especially they don't allow a club and you know the place to sell alcohol to open. Sure, yeah. that's that's rough. Mm -hmm. yeah. Rough. Ugh. Yeah. Nice. So, um, how about um, uh, what is your current project? What what did you do? Do you have any project that you're working on? Um. Well, uh, I guess, yes and no, I guess. I, I think that the whole COVID thing and, and, you know, me moving and all that, that's been a lot the past, I guess, year. Yeah. Um, so I haven't been like actively, you know, getting Doing together things. with musicians yeah. and like yeah. playing a lot with people. Um, yeah. I have been, I have been writing a bit and composing. Um, before COVID happened, I was playing a lot with, um, in New York with, um, a trio, you know, trumpet, bass, and drums. Wow. Um, so piano less. Piano less. Yeah. yeah. So chord. Yeah. 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 Um, and yeah, I, I was playing uh, like once or twice a month at this place called the Bar Next Door. Mm -hmm. yeah, um, yeah, yeah. With, uh, yeah, with, with two of my friends, actually Bob Bruyere. Ah, yeah. Bass player. You know, yeah, Bob. Yeah. yeah, I know uh, Bob. Yeah. And so uh, that group was really fun. You know, that was, that was cool that I had like, you know, steady gigs to kind of be consistently writing music for a group and getting to play a lot. 
Mm-hmm. Um, and that's still a group that I would like to keep uh, playing with. Yeah. And um, I would love to record with them, you know, soon, maybe yeah. one thing, once things kind of start to open up a little bit more. And yeah, um, yeah. Traveling is yeah. not that limit, you know. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Um, you know, I've been, I've been writing some stuff, but uh, I, I don't have, um, I haven't, I haven't really gotten together and played it with people yet. Um, but yeah, ho- I, I hope that once this stuff kind of clears, clears up a little bit, like I'll be able to start kind of yeah. getting people together and playing and hopefully recording some stuff. So yeah, I yeah. think this is pretty new for you in, in, in DC and especially you cannot go out and see anyone, you know. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. So you already got past the basic training three months? Or yes. Two, yeah, what, what yeah. do you have to do? <laughs> well, so it's, it's army basic training. So it's basically, it's the same thing anybody who joins the army has to do. Just running and, you know. Yep. There's, you know, there's a lot of. How to use gun and all this stuff. Yes. Um, Yeah. So, you know, there's, there, like you said, the running, the working out that we call that PT, um, Uh physical training. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's definitely an element of it. Um, Mm -hmm. There's part of its parts of it that were um, just working as a team. Like, you know, how do you communicate with people? How do you work as a team? You know, how do you treat somebody who's gotten injured? Um, in battle or whatever, yeah, you know, so yeah. there's brief, you know, first aid stuff like that. Um, rifle training, um, throwing grenades. Um, so is that, um, it's the same Is Jack. You remember Jack? It's yes. Trumpet. Is he also yes. in the army too? So he was, yeah. So he, yeah. he was actually in, um, kind of our, like a, I don't know if you would call it like the sister unit to us. So, uh-huh. uh, he was in the jazz ambassadors which is a yeah. great big band um and they're part of the u.s army field band because he so, got a scholarship from the gov- from the army right to study doctoral mm-hmm. in in u.s yes, right? exactly is exactly. that impo- so, is that going to be possible for you to continue your study too yeah potentially um i think so i i, I have to look into it a little more um mm-hmm. but i'm pretty sure that i could use uh it's called like the, what is it called? The GI bill or something mm-hmm. like that, where mm-hmm. the army will actually, you know, help you go to school and ed- get an education. They'll, you know, pay for up to a certain amount. Yeah, um, of course. Of course. So, yeah. And, and I'm, I definitely would be interested in getting a, a doctorate at some point. So yeah, that, could doc- definitely, that could definitely be a, a possibility. Dr. Alec. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. So, um, um, so uh, I mentioned a little bit um, that I want some I if you so kind to send us some of your video playing. Yes, I will. Um, I will do that. So could you talk a little bit about what you're gonna send us? Sure. Yeah, I'm actually gonna send um, some. Uh, or I'm, I think I'm gonna send a video from my uh, actually from my graduate recital at um, the Manhattan School of Music. Huh? And um, it's a bunch of people that I, you know, over my course of uh, time being in New York, I played with pretty mm-hmm. consistently. Um, and yeah, it was a, I wrote a, a bunch of original music, you know, while I was in school and in New York. And so um, I mostly featured that in this performance. Um, most of it was uh, sextet, uh, but I had a couple tunes where I played um quintet or quartet too um i'm still not sure exactly which tune i'm going to send there's a couple i might or i i okay. might have to pick from um, um, i'm looking forward to it yeah <laughs> cool, cool yeah i mean yeah. there's so many of my friend that you know i i've been in the states since 2011 so i know a lot of people and i would yeah. love to hear how they progress to music you know Totally. Some of my some of my friend when I I like I talked to um, Alex Brown last night. Oh, nice! Yeah, and yeah. and he sent me this. He playing violin, and uh, he oh. kind of like playing piano, and he like kind of like doing himself and mix it together, and it's like That's wow. Cool. <laughs> and, oh, okay. I mean, he already 
the one of the best player I I know, you know, and and he yeah. can doing this stuff is like whoa, that's another level. <laughs> Yeah, he's amazing. I yeah. I knew that he played violin. I have I haven't heard him play it though. So I'd be very curious to hear that. That's I can really send cool. that to you. <laughs> please do. Please do. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay. Well, well, I'll I'll look forward to see your video too. Okay. So um last question. So um maybe this will help with my student because um do you have any um, any words or advice or maybe just your experience about um, for for jazz musician or I mean my jazz student or whatever that um, how to get to this COVID situation or how we should look at it you know yeah that's a that's a great question um yeah, I mean, it's just been it's been such a crazy time, I think, for mm -hmm. for everybody. Um, and I feel I feel very fortunate that I kind of um, do have somewhat of like a steady job right now, which mm -hmm. I know like so many musicians can't can't say that. Mm -hmm. um, so I feel very lucky for that. But yeah, I, I, I just think that like this is such a great time. And, and what I've been trying to use it for myself is to. I mean, obviously to obviously to keep growing and improving, but maybe in, in ways that before you wouldn't have had the time to do or wouldn't have had, um, yeah, I don't know, wouldn't have had the opportunity to do. I think the fact that there's so much um, technology being incorporated into how we play right now is, I mean, in a way it's kind of a bummer because like, you know, people are doing all these virtual concerts and stuff and it's, it's never the same mm -hmm. as, you know, Seeing a band live. To, yes. I mean, when we, we go to the jazz club or we go to the Blue Note, we can see whatever we want to see, right? It's not like totally. going to this computer monitor and like, uh, ah. Yeah, watching. Yeah. And, I, on the one hand, I think it's kind of, it's, it's unfortunate. It's what we have to do. But on the other hand, I think that like, there's something really kind of cool about it that people, because I think people now are, you know, delving more into, how do I record myself? How do I, how, like, how do I video edit? Right. Because, you know, people are doing remote recordings and putting mm -hmm. them together. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, what are other avenues I can, you know, strengthen, what are other interests I have that I can strengthen that's going to make me a more well-rounded musician. Mm -hmm. And I, I think that that would be my advice is like to try to, you know, take the time that you have maybe right now that you maybe won't when this is um, hopefully over uh, or at least, you know, cleared up to some extent and, and really try to get into what you're interested in and, and maybe some other avenues um, that you can take to make you more well-rounded and more yeah. versatile. Yeah. 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 But it's definitely a, definitely a tough time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, man. So any any love, like um a, your army that you're gonna be is uh because I heard about this um, American jazz ambassador in the um, in the army section usually they travel around the world too right yeah um so that's actually kind of one difference between the jazz ambassadors and the army blues ah. the ambassadors um and and their whole unit which is called the field band their kind of their mission is to be I mean, like it says ambassadors, right? Yeah. They, they travel a lot, they a lot in the country and they do international stuff um, too. And that's a big part mm -hmm. of what their job is. We also travel, but not to the same extent. Uh, um, and uh, I mean, we're not uh, always on the road, you know, we're not uh, going all over the country all the time. We do still travel, we'll take a trip to here or there. Um, but it's a little bit less common for us to do than for the, the ambassadors to do. Um, we mostly stick more around the DC area. Cool. All right. Yeah. Thank you, Alec.
Hey, man. Good to see you. Good to see you. Thank you so How's much everything? for doing this. My pleasure. Yeah. So are you teaching online or something? Not really. I just joined this friend of mine, created this new online lessons platform. So I agreed to be a part of it. But um, that's a new thing for me. But haven't really done much of that so far. Yeah. Are you still teaching? Yeah, yeah. But um, uh, actually, this week is the jewelry week, so it's final. But every everything has to be online now. Um, it's because of COVID. Hard. Yeah. Um, the, now in Thailand is the third wave of the COVID. So you know, um, that's why I'm kind of like short notice for you to doing this stuff. You know, because um, we just know last week that we have to temporarily close down. Yeah. 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 How are you, man? What What would you be up to? And, you know, after man, just you where, know, you, where are you right now? <laughs> <laughs> right now I'm in Maryland, which is where I'm from originally. Uh -huh. And been back and forth some from here in New York because it's pretty close. Yeah. And yeah, um, just keep pretty busy considering I've been doing actually some gigs again this year, been having some more gigs again and doing some writing, some commercial work, done a few commercials actually. And, you know, hopefully I want to do more film composing. So that's something I'm trying to like focus on getting better at and thinking about maybe going to LA. Ah, that's yeah. That's the ball move, but everybody do it. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, man. It's so, all so good. So, um, could could you tell us about uh, how COVID um, affect your, you know, your work and gigs and everything since nine yeah. two thousand twenty? I think. Right. Right. So yeah, I mean, at the beginning, it was pretty tough. I I probably had one of my busiest years coming up ever of tours had a lot of stuff I was really excited about. So you're playing with uh, Paquito? Yeah, Paquito. Um, let me, sorry, one second. Let me exit this. Okay. And um, yeah, I had actually my last gig that I had was right before everything got shut down, did four nights at the Jazz Standard with Daphnis Prieto. And then oh, we man. recorded his new album. And then the next day, I think, I was supposed to fly to Colorado for a performance with Imani Wins and Harlem Quartet, and they canceled it. And of course, at the time, I was thinking, this is ridiculous. I can't believe they canceled this gig. And then a week later, you know, I was freaking out and like <laughs> everything was completely locked down. And then that was basically, that was that, so. Yeah, I... Um... I remember by that time, um, Jonathan Weisberg and come to uh, he and came come to Thailand, and then Martin was gonna be here too. Mm. But later, I heard um, he cannot come because um, he, um, his wife doesn't allow him to come. <laughs> That's a good reason. <laughs> yeah, I know. Yeah, yeah, man. So, who who else did you play with? um like last year or just in general general yeah well yeah so I, i've been working with paquito de rivera for about 14 years um but i've been really lucky to play with a lot of different great people um for the past two or three years i've been working a lot with the incredible trumpet player sean jones um he's uh heading the jazz program at peabody now in baltimore yeah. And I, I did teach there with him for a little while uh, before I left. And also there's a lot, actually a lot of great musicians in the Baltimore DC area, which is where I'm from that I work with a lot. So also Warren Wolf, the great vibraphonist. Um, we mm -hmm. actually just recorded a live stream performance uh, Warren with, with Warren and members of the Baltimore Symphony Orchestra. So string quartet. And that's going to be airing in May. So I'm really excited about that. We've performed it at the, the Meyerhoff Symphony Hall, which is where the Baltimore Symphony performs. So no audience, of course. But um, we played part of a suite by Chick Corea, actually, called the Lyric Suite that was originally written for 
So Chick wrote it for himself, Gary Burton, and a string quartet. And we performed some of that. And we also performed a tune of mine, actually, that I wrote when I was down with you at Miami. Mm -hmm. And I kind of reworked it for this instrumentation. So that was fun. Okay. So um, after, um, not after, but so the, all the gig last year, 2020, was canceled due to COVID. And from from that to now, is everything get better now or still? No, it's still very much in the air. I mean, I actually have some tours booked for this summer. So, you know, we'll just have to see if they happen. And I honestly have a bit mixed feelings about whether or not I even want to be traveling. Summer is very close in a yeah. few, few months, I think, right? Exactly. Yeah. So... But, but I, um, yeah, but yeah. are you getting already gotten the shot? I did, yeah. Oh. Literally just got it this week, actually. So Which one? Very lucky. Very lucky. Um, I got the Pfizer. Oh, so two doses. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Good luck to you. Um, <laughs> that sounds great, man. Um, Have so, you gotten a uh, shot yet? No. Yeah. Not. I don't want to say anything about it because um, our government is very slow on this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And we're not the country that, you know, uh, doing this thing. So we mostly. I think you guys. Sorry, go ahead. Yeah, mostly we 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 buy it. You know, so. It seems like Thailand did a very good job of managing, from what I remember. Yeah, but the now, it's, now it's the third wave coming and we have yeah. the, the new virus strain from from um, England, which is very, very, the one of the worst new strain. You know, so it's mm. making everything getting worse. And now it seemed like, um, seem like they cannot contain it, but we have to see what will happen. You know? Yeah, yeah. No, it's tough. It's okay, um, but you know, I'm glad you. I'm having you guys to. You, know. um, you you said you played jazz standard before, so that place is close, right? Yeah, unfortunately, they they did close. I mean, I, I love, see that there's. I love that yeah. place, man. Yeah. I know it's why well, it was one of my favorite clubs. You know, everything about it was great. the mm -hmm. The room was great. They always treated the musicians so nicely even when I would go there just as an audience member. And if I saw like someone I knew who worked there, they would always be so nice and treat me so well. And they would, you know, the food there yeah, was yeah, incredible yeah, too. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a good thing that they have food up there. And, and, you know, yeah. So um, I'm talking about Jazz Club. Would you, you tour, you just used to tour a lot. Would you, um, um, tell me what is your dream or the, the good place that you experience, you know, that would you like to play in that venue or, you know? Yeah, well, I've always loved playing in clubs as, a, you know, concert halls are great too, but the nice yeah. thing about clubs is you have that really intimate experience with the other musicians and with the audience because sometimes in a concert hall, it can actually be a little difficult to play because everyone's just further apart on the stage so you can't really hear each other that well especially once you start having like amps involved and monitors because you know you need the monitor to be able to hear the other musicians but then it's it's really hard to get it exactly the way you need it to hear it so it just kind of but whereas in a club often you can just you're close enough together yeah. to hear each other and you know the the since it's a smaller space you don't have as much reverberation in the audience yeah. and you feel like you're connected with the audience too yeah. So is there any place you do like, oh, I miss playing that place when, when, when we talk about club, jazz club? You know? Yeah, I mean, there's so many great clubs I've played at over the years. And one of the great things, it's not always even just how fancy the room is or how good the food is, but sometimes it's also just the vibe, the atmosphere and the vibe of the people. Mm -hmm. So, you know, like I mentioned, I think earlier, I grew up in the Maryland area, like in between for people that might not be familiar, um, basically right near Washington, DC. And as a high school kid, and also like in college, when I was on breaks, 
I would, I would do a lot of gigs in DC and DC has a great history of jazz and music in general and African-American culture. That's where Duke Ellington is from. Yeah. And there is a area of DC called U Street that, mm -hmm. which is actually the area that Duke Ellington grew up. And it has a history, a strong history of like jazz music taking place there. And unfortunately, actually it kind of had, when I was around 19 or 20 years old, there were all these jazz clubs. I think within a couple of blocks, there were maybe 10 or 15 places that had live jazz on any given night. Mm -hmm. And it's kind of like a story of gentrification where the neighborhood got way too fancy. And now there's not really any of those places left, unfortunately, I don't uh... think. But there was this one club called Bohemian Caverns. And I think it was originally opened in the 20s or 30s. I don't know exactly when, but it was like really old and it had closed down, but the space was still there. And this guy reopened it around that time in the 2000s at some point and kind of restored it. And it was like, you would walk down the staircase into a basement. It looked like a fake cave. Like literally it was like, had fake stalactites and stalagmites uh -huh. and like made out of paper mache or something. And it was just like, it wasn't a fancy place, but you know, all the greats actually played there back in the day. I think John Coltrane performed there, probably Miles Davis, all these legendary musicians at some point had played there. And it was like, kind of like just the atmosphere in that club was just so great. Like people really would get into the music. There's nothing like a, a DC or a Baltimore audience, you know, it's just like people, people who really understand and appreciate the music. And also yeah. a lot, you know, people want to hear the blues too. They don't want you to come in and play this like super modern sounding. <laughs> like it yeah. has to, it has to feel good, whatever you're playing. It can't just be too intellectual, you know? Of course, of course. Yeah. Um, so what is your, I think you already mentioned a little bit. What is your now current project? Um, and you're going to doing a new album or can you? Uh, yeah, I actually about? just, I just finished my new album. So I am just kind of doing all the final things, you know, it's been mastered. The artwork's almost done. Um, someone's writing liner notes right now. So. Is it the know. trio or? So there's kind of like a core band from, so there is kind of like a core trio and then also a guitarist and percussionist on a lot of the tracks. And then on top of that, we have some additional guitars and additional percussion on some of the tracks. So that's pretty much the way it's structured, but it's all original music of mine. Kind of a lot of it's influenced by some different Latin American rhythms, but it kind of just runs through a bunch of, it's kind of hard to, I'm terrible at talking about my own music. Yeah, so you'll just uh, have to listen to it, I guess. <laughs> okay, so um, is that something that you're gonna um, let us see on the video that you want us to see? You know, I don't have any of that right now. It's okay. Um, and um, unfortunately, yeah. I don't, I, you know, we actually started recording a lot of this quite a while ago and I didn't realize at the time the importance of having video uh, at yeah. that time. Yeah. So, you know, hopefully, we might actually try to put together a few videos to coordinate with the release, but they would be different, um, of you know, of course, than the actually what we recorded on the album. But yeah. one thing I have been doing a lot this past year, especially like at the very beginning of COVID when it was like completely locked down, not going anywhere. I don't know. Maybe it's like that there now, but here in the U S everyone is just kind of doing whatever they want no, no matter what. But anyway, I, you know, I got the idea you know, through my training actually at U of Miami, I don't know if everyone knows, but we were both there at the same time, which was really great. Um, I learned about like recording and all that kind of stuff. And I started making all these remote videos. So uh, I'm sharing with you to share with people a couple of those videos that I've put together over the last year. And that's that was something that really kind of just got me through mentally through this process because, you know, just not being able to make music with other people, I'm sure you know, is just very difficult when we are privileged enough to get to do that yeah. all the time. So, you know, I shared with you a couple of videos. One of them was, one of them was a video with the Paquito de Rivera group. 
Um, and that's an arrangement I did of Chick Corea's tune called Eye of the Beholder, mm -hmm. which you recorded with the electric band. So, so that was you, a lot of- you, you did that by yourself? Yeah, so I arranged it and then everyone recorded themselves mm -hmm. and sent me, you know, I put together a sequence so that everyone had something to track along with. Uh -huh. Then everyone recorded themselves. I, you know, mixed it in Pro Tools, uh, edited the video and final cut. I know I'm not a video pro like you are. No, but, you, uh, <laughs> you do an amazing job, man. It's like, wow. It's like everyone coming together and then you cut off and I check it out. It's like, wow. <laughs> yeah. Thanks. Yeah. So that, that was one. Then another similar thing with this group called the Baltimore Jazz Collective I'm part of. Um, so that's the original of mine called the Baltimore Collective. And then I did one other video, which I shared. I don't know if you're going to yeah. share all these or not, yeah. but um, where I figured out how to make it look like I was playing a duet with myself. Yeah. So yeah. I recorded this tune, beautiful tune called Milonga Greece by a pianist uh, and composer in Argentina named Carlos Aguirre. And I recorded myself playing piano and violin. And yeah, I saw did that. that split screen <laughs> trick, you know? Yeah, yeah. And you have one camera in the, on the, like, see the piano and you zoom in and out like a like a mirror yourself like that's so cool <laughs> oh thanks yeah, thanks. yeah yeah very low budget you know at the time you know i was doing all this on my ipad and my iphone so i don't even have high quality cameras at the time also i wasn't thinking at all about like if it was a good looking shot or how the lighting is that's yeah. something i you know going forward now it's like i'm starting to realize oh that's something i need to start thinking about because if I want the video to look like really high quality, it just kind of looks like I was recording on my phone in my living room, which is exactly what was happening. So <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's look great, man. It's, 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 yeah. I think this COVID thing does like make make us to try to more be, be more creative, you know? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Well, it forces everyone to realize, you know, you have to diversify your skills and be able to do a lot of different things. I mean, that was kind of true already, but it was an even greater reminder. If you want to be a musician, especially a jazz musician in yeah. 2021. I think you have to you know, improvise. For, yeah, literally. <laughs> <laughs> do a lot of yeah. different things, you know? Yeah, yeah. Well, um, would you um, share your idea about like, I mean, if I'm talk, if you want to talk to jazz student or you know jazz musician right now in this COVID situation, and also a jazz audience too. Um, just in terms about what what about, specifically about jazz music about you know um, for I think for a jazz student or jazz musician, what what they should do right now or what right right yeah. Well, you know, there's from, always from, this, from your experience of, you know, doing this. Right. Well, there's always kind of been this debate in jazz about is it better to spend a lot of time really learning the history of the music, um, you know, and be an expert in learning about all the historic, the greats. And even that there's different schools about, well, bebop is the top and or you know i really like the music of the 50s and 60s miles quintet in the 60s whatever it is there's always these different schools of thoughts about like what's the most important use of your time and then some people are always saying well no i just want to be creative i want to do something new i want to do something innovative and for me personally it's always been about finding that balance between those two things because i could see validity to both of those things i think if you don't if you literally ignore the history of the music, you know, you're just first, you know, that's how you learn is by listening to greats that came before you. And I would argue that you don't have to limit that to just jazz. So, I mean, for me, I, I love listening to all kinds of music. I love classical music. There's so much you can learn from classical composers and Stravinsky, Ravel. I mean, these guys were doing a lot of stuff that you hear now in modern jazz harmony holst you know in like the 1910s and 20s uh and you know all these other composers during that time and even the late 1800s uh so uh, but 
in terms of like having a career, you know, it's kind of like what I was saying a minute ago. It's, it's very difficult, I think, for most people to just make a living just as a full-time jazz performer. You know, you can always play gigs, um, but, and, but I think which, most people which, these days- Which now gig is not really a choice. Right. So if we're talking about specifically during COVID yeah, times, that's yeah. even more, it's, it's been very difficult. I'll be honest for like a lot of musicians. And, you know, that's why I've spent a lot of my time working on trying to become a, good at mixing and, and more audio production stuff and getting better at composing for media. I think there's, you know, always going to, I don't know about always, but it seems to be still a lot of demand for music, for media, because there's always advertisements and movies and TV shows. I know that industry has been hit pretty hard as well during COVID, yeah. but just in, in general and teaching, you know, so it's, it's just kind of like, you just have to figure out really what works, what works for you because mm -hmm. there's, there's not really one, one answer, you know, and it, you really have to do it because you love it because it's, it's not necessarily uh, there's there's definitely not any guarantee of making a lot of money from it. Mm -hmm. Even a lot of the guys and gal, gals, I don't mean guys yeah. as in men, but just yeah. everyone. Yeah. Uh, a lot of people that we consider like such respected musicians, you, you know, I, th I think it's, it's people aren't necessarily getting rich. Let's just mm -hmm. say. So. Jazz musician, we, we just of course we play music and it's really fun, but it's have to be something that help you survive too, right? Yeah, so it's when you put that on YouTube, is you expect, you know, some modernization from YouTube or something like that too? You know, that would be nice. Um, <laughs> I don't have a big enough- um, Audience? Yeah. yeah, I don't have enough hours watch time yet. So everyone who's watching this interview, go to my YouTube and just leave it on playing nonstop on your computer while you sleep. And that would help me. <laughs> but, uh, refresh, refresh, refresh. <laughs> but uh, no, in all seriousness, yeah, I mean, it's, it is important to, you know, there was this model of how the music industry, when I was younger, seeing older musicians, you know, you get signed to a record label and you would tour and you would play at these different clubs. And there was enough money still in the jazz music industry that it seemed like that was the way to success. And that's very different now, you know, some people have been able to have, well, it's becoming more and more the norm. People actually have success through using these social media and it's good and bad because, um, you know, now anyone has access to building an audience and they don't need some gatekeeper, you know, to prevent, this but i think sometimes the downside is i think sometimes social media doesn't necessarily work if you're trying to make certain kinds of art it's kind of more about what is going to impress people i mean there's a very short attention span it's like often 30 second clips or minute long clips and people probably don't even watch that whole thing but yet this is like a tool that we're using to try to grow so it's for me, I know it's a struggle between wanting to take advantage of these tools, but also not wanting to compromise my own artistic goals, I guess you could say, or integrity. And I don't mean that as a judgment on anyone else, because, you know, it's a, it's the wild west out there and everyone's just trying to be successful in mm -hmm. any way they can. And Sometimes I feel really good about my content that I post. And sometimes I'm like, oh, this, maybe this will get a lot of likes. So we all, I think, do it to a certain extent. Uh, but it's, for me, it's that, that trying to navigate that balance can be tricky, you know? Yeah, yeah. But it's, it's a good content out yeah. there. You know? All right. Thank you so much, man. Thank you so much. Hey, yeah. thanks to you for having me. So I hope yeah. we can uh, do this in person sometime soon. Yeah, yeah. All right. Okay. So good luck to you and your music.
Baltimore Collective, here we are counting in with Brother Brown. Here it goes. One, two, one, two, three.
Um, Hi. Hi. How you doing, buddy? Good. How are you? Doing good. Thanks. Yeah. Thank you so much for doing this for us. Yeah. Hey, you're welcome, man. Um, yeah. Hey, I want to, you know, I want, I want to help you guys out. I want to hopefully, you know, um, keep, keep jazz alive in Thailand. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, it's, tough. it's a tough time for everybody. And uh, so, yeah, please, you know, I, um, um, let me know, let me know what I can do. Um, we, you don't have a lot of time. I know. Um, can you, um, so you, you, you and your family are okay. Yeah. You got the shot. Yeah. Wow. Two doses yep. already? Cool, yep. man. So now you can travel again all around the world. <laughs> I mean, yeah. Yeah, I can. Uh, but I, but there's not still really very many of opportunities. Course, small yeah, step yeah. at the time, you know. So could you tell us about um, since, I think, since January last year, how is your gigs, how your life going? How is uh -huh. it changing, you know? Yeah. Um, well, you know, it's changed for everybody. It, it's changed for me in the same way. Um, I, you know, I lost my gigs uh, in March a year ago and tours and, you know, recording sessions and basically everything that I was doing. Um, I managed to salvage some teaching, uh, but I lost some too. And, and then I just started doing a lot of online remote teaching. I started teaching um, different age groups, um, mm -hmm. high school. I never taught high school students before. And I started doing that. And, um, and I really enjoyed that actually. So, I, so that became a, more of a part of what I did. I really expanded on Patreon, what I've been doing on Patreon, which is my, um, uh, you know, my, it's kind of my network for, yeah. uh, you know, releasing all kinds of tutorial videos on, music and drums and, you know, arrangements and composition and, you know, everything that I do, um, I, I do through that. So, you know, it gives, it gives my students a chance that they don't have to study with me privately. Mm -hmm. They can still be, be members of my Patreon and they get so much information about me and what I do and my songs mm -hmm. and, you know, mm -hmm. and I answer their questions. And so, um, in fact, right after this, I'm doing a, you know, a get together with, with, you know, the page Patreon group, um, which I do, uh, you know, I do every couple of weeks. Yeah, just yeah, for, yeah, yeah. Um, so that's been cool because I've been able to, you know, be really hands on with people, and I'm, I'm very social. So I missed, uh, I missed, you know, hanging out at clubs and talking to people and and all that. So uh, Patreon's helping a little bit with that as well. Yeah. Um, and uh, yeah, I mean, other than that, you know, family wise, we're just in one place. My daughters love that I'm home. <laughs> they keep that's over. a good thing about this, right? <laughs> They, they wouldn't they wouldn't know what me going on tour would be like again they they would have no idea <laughs> um, yeah. yeah so they yeah. like that and so, uh, yeah generally you know we've pivoted enough i, I mean i feel like oh, things are okay i'm definitely looking forward to getting back to you know touring and playing every night and and um you know and all that but yeah but so things are okay. yeah so it's um fun from now do you have any project or any um gigs that coming up well, I have a gig on Wednesday um, with my trio. Uh, I actually have three different trios right now that I'm actively working with and oh. one duo. Oh. Um, the duo is with Chris Potter. We're doing something in um, uh, in June, a mm -hmm. concert, uh, which we're hoping that's going to be open to the public. Mm -hmm. um, if it's not, it'll be streamed. Mm -hmm. And um, and the trio, uh, I'm playing with a couple different trios that are playing my music. Mm -hmm. uh, one, uh, we, we played small still, um, smalls has been really leading the way as far as, you know, trying to keep things going and support musicians and, yeah. you know, they've, they've been incredible. Um, uh, you know, and they, they just don't have a choice, but it's kind of like emergency mode. And, um, another place that I've been playing at is called Terraza, Terraza seven, which is in Queens, another really amazing, uh, mm -hmm. place. And the, the person that owns it is just kind of like a you know he's a saint yeah. and a genius wrapped into one you know? yeah. um so you know i mean there's been places that have that have been staying open and helping me and, and so but very rare i might i might have just a few gigs a month or something yeah. like that so so talking about club in, in new york how is it going are they surviving this or do you know so some are uh, not many <laughs> 
Yeah. Depends. Mm. Many many clubs are not. Yeah, I heard um Jazz Standard is tried um yeah temporarily closed. Oh yeah, Jazz Standard. Yeah. 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 Wow. That's right. All right. Yeah. And <laughs> and Thailand, uh, same thing. I imagine, right? I mean. Yeah, we kind of like come and go. Like last when it happened, uh, middle of last year, like the April, we have to close that. We have a, a lockdown, so every place cannot, you know, we have to close down. And then things getting better, we op we open again, and until the new year, new year gigs is all canceled. So right. they have to close down on new year, and now. You know, last two weeks we have to close down again. So, is the vaccine starting to get around there at all yet, or a little bit? It's very slow because we didn't we didn't produce it. Yeah, you know, you know it's not like in, old, in, in some in, some in, old old people have it. Yeah, I think that's the priority. Old people with um uh, some medical condition. Yeah, yeah, yeah but um, in 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 the state, it's very fast right now. They everybody got shot like. I think all of my friends that I talked to, like all of them got shot already. It's, yeah, it's very, I mean, all the companies are, are very much American companies and um, yeah, they bought, they bought a lot of them. So, you know, I think that the U.S. has some problems, but it's not getting enough vaccines. That's not the yeah. problem. It's more convincing everybody that they need to. Yeah, 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 yeah. And it's, <laughs> you know, it's like, <laughs> hey, we, we have food for you. Oh yeah, yeah. but I don't, I don't know. Yeah, I don't want it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't believe you. <laughs> it's the same problem we have with education. You know, it's like yeah, we have the best yeah. education here. It's incredible it's education in the world. You know, yeah. and yeah. and people take it for granted. They don't think that. Oh, I don't. I don't want to be. I have to <laughs> okay, last question because you have to go. Um, from since last year and this thing happened, um, do you have any comments or advice for, you know, maybe some jazz musician that have to face this? this kind of situation to, you know, how should we look at it? How should we survive this? Yeah, well, I mean, just make the best of it. For me, what I, I did is I made a commitment um, to uh, to get better at a couple instruments um, other than the drums. One is ukulele. So I started uh -huh. playing a lot of ukulele in the, in the uh, summertime. And then it kind of moved to piano. And so I've been really working on on improving at piano and um, and just practicing a lot every day. And so I definitely feel like I've I've made big improvements that I would never have made otherwise. Uh -huh. um, pick something that you want to get better at, you know, and make a commitment and do it. Um, I could say that to the drummers out there, you know, make a commitment, practice every day, join my Patreon. You'll have plenty of plenty to do. Uh -huh. um, you just you know watch, listen to music, and uh, and you know make better better yourself in some way that you wouldn't have otherwise. So at least you can come out of it saying. Yeah, it was a drag, but I got this out of it, you know. Yeah, got, get yeah. something out of it. That's a good one. All right. Thank you so yeah. much. And I and I hope to be, you know, I hope to come to Thailand. Yeah. I, yeah. I, I, yeah, I miss it. I'm gonna do uh one of my favorite ballads right now. This is called Blame It on My Youth. I'm going to do one of my favorite ballads right now. This is called Blame It on My Youth. If I expect to love Blame it on my youth If only just for you I did it Blame it 
Test.
right, everybody. Thanks so much for tuning into this. Really appreciate it. This is Anthropology by Charlie Parker.
Okay. Hey, Aya, thank you for, so much for doing this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, would you tell us who you are and um, what, what you're doing right now? Yeah, uh, you... okay. I'm Aya. Yeah. Aya Sekine. I'm a Japanese pianist living in Singapore. And I'm teaching every day. <laughs> uh -huh. so... And I'm trying to practice, yeah, for yeah. No, no gigs. <laughs> There's, there are no gigs here. That's yes. interesting. So you said um, you mentioned before that you didn't perform in Singapore. I mean, in Singapore, you cannot perform since last March. Yeah, properly. Uh, the venues are not allowed to have live music, mm -hmm. but the, the government has opened up uh, concert halls. And mm -hmm. if you are approved by the government for ticketed concert without like food or beverage, mm -hmm. There is uh, some concerts, but it's very limited, mm. and there's a lot of restrictions. And the venue needs to to be approved. So that means the restaurants and small places are completely inactive right now. So, would you tell us about like since the COVID happened, how how is it affected the, your life and your you know your gigs and all that? Yeah. Okay. So, since the pandemic or before, even before the pandemic. Um, That's too dark, like um, the end of 2019. January, January, January. It was January. January in 2020? Last year. Yeah, right? after yeah. performing at TIJC. Yeah. That was probably like the last uh, travel I did. Mm -hmm. After that, I canceled four air, air tickets yeah. to go back to Japan for tour. To yeah. twice to Thailand, I had yeah. I I have you book at Alone Together yeah. too, yeah. And then I was to, we talk yeah, about was, yeah, a lot of things. And I was planning a tour, small tour uh, in in Thailand, and I had a few things lined up. So first of all, I had to cancel all of them, mm -hmm. and also we were also canceling our gigs, but like mm -hmm. the venues were already canceling. The events were being canceled in Singapore. And uh, I think since January, we started to teach online mm. for my school, which is LaSalle College, you know. So, so a lot of that's in were... Singapore, right? Yeah. And they're very like concerned and active on this situation since January 2020. Yeah, a lot of anxiety because we, we weren't sure if we are supposed to cancel things or not cancel. And then everybody's kind of waiting for the concert or the gig to happen. and last minute we're like let's not do it because the infection rates were going up you know mm -hmm. so we were, we were forced to and then the government started to make make things a little bit more uh obvious like don't do it you know which actually to be honest it made it much easier mm -hmm. than trying to decide ourselves like yeah. should we play? if they tell you don't do it it's a little bit like okay let's let's just follow yeah and uh, yeah, so we had to stop everything and everything was becoming online and so many information online. So it was starting to like affect me sort of mentally because too many things are going on online. So I started not to use social media. I was just like, I can't, there's too many things, you know, in my head already. It's, I can't contain and I'm looking at other people's problems and I'm like, okay. So I just like cut off everything mm -hmm. <laughs> for a That's while, good. quite a bit. Yeah, and I start to draw. Mm -hmm. So what <laughs> happened when you don't have gigs? No gigs. What, what, some what did you do? Students, how, how do you survive through this? Um, teaching online. Okay. And luckily, some of my students, existing students, private students, really wanted to continue. Because mm -hmm. I think they were also trying to live life, you know? Yeah. They need connection with like, and then the kids, you know, they needed to, the parents needed the kids to connect to the outside world, not just home. Mm -hmm. I think mm -hmm. some good things like spending time with more, more time with the family, you know, mm -hmm. but no more school, right? Like yeah. no more outside activities. So I think they were just trying to keep the, you know, the connection. So I, I was able to kind of sustain because of some of the students and I'm very thankful for them. And they were like sending me food, you know, delivery, yeah, That's so great. sweet, you know. Yeah, yeah they yeah. were like sending me some stuff and uh, and with the with the grab, you know, mm -hmm. grab mm -hmm. delivery and mm -hmm. so so they re really kept me like 
not so alone because I live alone for mm -hmm. for that time. So, mm -hmm. and I couldn't really practice because I kind of lost the uh, inspiration. So I started yeah. to draw and paint. Oh, maybe you I can love. show us some. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. And I started to do it so much that it became, it started to become like a thing. Yeah. And and few months after, in September, I had like uh, my exhibition, like slash oh. audio. So improvisation, music improvisation, and drawing and spoken word. That's very and good I, idea, <laughs> you know? Yeah. 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 So I kind of turned into something some new way of expressing myself you know? yeah i i talked to one of the my friend last night too and he like oh he said um he learned under this COVID situation he learned how to um doing video editing and all this yeah. you know sure yeah 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 so, okay. but I, but your 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 way is very very good like drawing and then improvisation yeah, it was very natural, it, and it was a lot of negativity coming out. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. when I'm negative, my drawing and painting came out very funny, a little bit funny. So people started to kind of find it really interesting. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So I will show you. Okay. Sure. Okay. So let's talk about. Um, you've been touring a, a lot before the COVID. Would yeah. you um, do you have um any um ideal um, jazz bar that you like or you know any place that you yeah I like Thailand yeah. Thailand is like my favorite place to go and I was planning on going more often like every other month you know uh -huh. I kind of wanted to like live there like partially uh -huh. also Japan of course I mean I wanted to go to the United States as well but I just like everything I canceled but Thailand is like I wanted to explore more you know, that's why I was really frequently contacting you and yeah. friends. I have more friends there and then collaborators were trying starting like new projects. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And um, How yeah, about so ja Thailand, like, yeah, just bar like well, in any oh, I mean, have a lot together. Any place else the... like um, I mean, is there any kind of like um, ideal re re requirement like a if they have grand Does piano, piano? If... Oh, yeah, sure. well i need the piano <laughs> yeah and i mean yeah. i can i do, i've done a lot of gigs with keyboards yeah but i, I do love piano because i'm a pianist yeah and i can do things that i normally don't do on a keyboard which i can do both but piano means a lot to me mm -hmm, mm -hmm. good grand is good but yeah. if it's upright it's okay too if yeah. if it's piano it's good and i mean preferably when there's a certain amount of like uh not silence but some quietness when i'm performing it's great so i can hear yeah, myself and of course but but it's okay to have vibrancy you know i think last, yeah last time you've been alone together um the piano is yamaha on the on yeah, your uh, yeah left side of the room yeah now we change to the right side but we oh, take did. we take the cover off oh you did yeah so so the, I can't wait to go. The, yeah, yeah. You can I see can't the wait. the picture in the in I our. Think I saw. Yeah. It, it looks like a different place. I didn't know where it was actually placed. Yeah. I love yeah. it here. It's like it's such a nice ambience. I didn't drink so much that day, but you know, it would have been a nice. <laughs> place to hang out. It'll be a nice place to hang out. You know, yeah. listening to music, hanging out. You know, and then listening, and then just meeting your musician friends, and you know, like yeah. check out the scene. Yeah. It's in the middle. You know. It's a great district. It's so mm -hmm. convenient. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I Good. I miss this place. So, is the um, how is the jazz club situation in Singapore? Is it still nothing? Is, nothing is allowed to operate. Of course, so but um, are they are they like can they survive this? I'm not sure. Yeah, honestly, I mean, I don't know. But they're trying yeah. to do other things because they normally have drinks. Mm -hmm their bars and then quite nice places. So I think they're trying to sustain their business by just kind of keeping them as a, you know, food and beverage outlet. But of course the music is not happening. So mm -hmm. yeah, I don't know. I mean, music probably wasn't the best income for them. Of course. But it was their passion. Yeah. I mean, it was like they were known for you know, and then both of these jazz clubs and there's two jazz clubs that are operating with music 
with piano and then there's another one with with keyboard you know who's like completely everybody else i mean is inactive so yeah. i i don't know how about yeah, in, you know any it. place else in in southeast asia that you've been touring um any jazz pub that they they c cannot survive or i don't you know? know actually i know some places in kl but um i think were... there's a the the big place in kl that they closed down no, I, I, yeah yeah no i didn't really close evelyn the the owner she actually closed it temporarily and then she went on a like a world trip oh but that's before the COVID, i think yeah so i think maybe it wasn't like because of COVID, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. but i'm not sure exactly what's going on right now it's been a long time you know yeah and then yeah. yeah her trip was supposed to be like a year or something but i'm not sure what's going on but i didn't hear that they actually closed down okay. and there were a couple of places in kl and in penang there's like some cafes but they didn't how about really japan Oh, Japan, a lot of places are going through a hard time. Japan is going through a state of emergency right now, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. starting starting today, probably. Mm -hmm. It's like a semi-lockdown because we don't have have a lockdown. Mm. We, are, we, we are unable to do that. To, uh, the government is unable to fully lock, lock, lock the country down. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But a lot of the small jazz bars are going through a hard time. Yeah, yeah I think yeah. maybe some places might have closed but there are so many of them that um i'm not sure which one is yeah and they're doing a lot of fundraising before but i'm not sure it, it's been a year you know yeah already yeah. so yeah i mean some of the jazz club that in in new york um you know yeah jazz standard jazz is, yeah it's i'm very quite sad. happy to hear smalls and uh, mesero is, are still surviving yeah and some other places I'm not sure what's going on with Fat Cat or like those little places, like more like a jam session place. I know the Village Vanguard is there because yeah. They're, yeah. I, they're doing live streaming quite a bit. Yeah, yeah. 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 I think um, outside I think, of New York. Yeah, for okay. right now, it's just who can survive the longest, you know? Yeah. I mean, I mean they, they're getting the vaccinations, so mm -hmm. hopefully, mm -hmm. you know, a bit yeah, more. Yeah, talking about that, you already got the um, two shot of the vaccine? Yeah, quite happy about that. How, I mean, you, I, don't know, I don't know what what this is gonna do yet because nothing is open uh -huh. or not traveling yet. You yeah, know, I haven't. Yeah, yeah. technically, so, so is Thailand like close the border? The border closed? Is your border um, closed? You still can come, but you have to be in the quarantine for fourteen days, I think. Right, and then you also need to have a visa, right, or some kind of reason. I don't. I um. You just have to have the medical um say that you oh. are. Oh, so you uh, can actually go there and then. Oh, okay. Maybe I check it but out. The point is the fourteen day quarantine is very expensive too. Yeah, but yeah. it's a Thailand fourteen days. Maybe it's not as expensive as Singapore. Maybe I don't know. <laughs> yeah, it is like it's like eight hundred uh thousand eight, US for two oh. weeks see yeah so the current is a little different so maybe i'll look into it yeah, so yes. the, it's not crossing the border maybe i should come so so um <laughs> what so you you got the vaccination because you're a teacher yeah my school oh. actually yes my school has g gave us uh some privilege so the the pri priority is teacher yeah, too, right that's good. yeah and i think they worked out the priority within the school because uh -huh. i'm teaching on site I'm mm -hmm. teaching like in-person classes. Some of the classes are like online. big lecture. Yeah. Yeah, online. But mine's are small, like sight reading class for eight people or, you know, like principal studies. So I'm mm -hmm. able to, yeah, I, I was quite early. The, I think one of the first batch to get the vaccination. Good. So tell yeah. me about your current project gigs or anything like that that you current work on. So my current project is like, <laughs> trying to keep myself motivated. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I've done quite a bit of things actually during the, um, like a circuit breaker last year. We, in Singapore, we call the lockdown circuit breaker. Mm -hmm. And uh, I actually had Te Sirat, uh, Pudian Santia, he uh -huh. yeah, has, yeah. 
he, he recorded something for me as well. But after that, um, I finished that project, like writing some compositions during the lockdown, and I did that. And things opened up, and I've just been going up and down, inspired, not inspired, <laughs> inspired, not inspired, you know? Yeah. Because there's no small gigs, and small gigs are very important, right? Yeah, of course. Not, yeah. not everything is like big concert. You of know, course. But a, and, yeah, and, you need gigs. Yeah, and I talked to my friend too. He said... Um, gigs in in jazz club is more close together yeah if you, if you play in the the big hall then everything is so far away even the audience you know yeah and then you don't have a room to sort of you know improvise to mm -hmm. to with the audience and interact so it's like yeah. a completely different situation it's it's like two different jobs almost right yeah but but in order for me or probably you too to to work up to the big concert or the recording project which is like a benchmark we always need a bounce off yeah of that you know yeah. daily jam yeah. daily hangout listening to somebody or you do yeah. it yourself i i remember when um so the first um lockdown that we cannot we have to to close down temporary um and yeah. then we can come back and open again and then i start playing with my friend and i feel like Oh, I like um, I'm rusty, you know. Like I cannot play. I, know. <laughs> I, I think I want it's to play this, yeah. but then it's like yeah. delay, you know. Some, yeah. It's a muscle thing as well, right? Like yeah. connecting the brain, and I mean, you know a lot about this, but yeah, yeah it's like it's a it's a whole body activity that needs. It's to like every exercise that you have to do every day, and it's then. Like your car. Yeah. It's like yeah. Your car. You can't just have the handle. You need the yeah. brakes, everything, yeah. the oil. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so yeah so it's difficult you know so my project right now is like trying to get like a jam like mm -hmm. private jam at like a rehearsal studio yeah, and then just kind of challenging challenging like play some standards practice trying to feel good about practicing listening to music because at one point i couldn't listen to music i couldn't touch the piano at all i just wow. had this mental block yeah 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 it was it was really tiring yeah Mm -hmm. to feel that way it's so it's uh i'm so sensitive <laughs> you know yeah. everything affects me yeah so i'm just trying to like ease into it you know yeah i have some friends to jam with it's not really like a concert but just like weekly i get together with them and we try do different things old songs mm -hmm. new songs whatever yeah so like that, for us music is like a something that we let out you know like um yeah we have to yeah otherwise Otherwise, it doesn't like circulate, and then yeah. nothing will come out. So just practicing to be back to like playing and feeling good about playing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. taking a long time, but yeah, that's the only thing we can do here in cool. Singapore. So tell me about um what um what um, performance you want us to see. I'm not sure yet. Actually, I need to decide. Okay. I Yeah, I I'd like to present something. Okay. And then maybe, okay. Maybe think about maybe think about Thailand, how okay. I want to be back there. Yeah, I was so excited to go back there and then it's really sad. I really yeah. hope you guys, uh, your government, you know, find a way to, to reduce, mm -hmm. you know, the infections because you guys are doing quite okay for a while. Not now. <laughs> Today yeah. is um, about 3,000 people, oh new cases. Oh. Yeah. Okay. Did the it's, night it's been, it been um, about 1,500 for two days and really? now it's 2800 you know which is um, i don't know is it from bangkok or it's all over thailand oh over i think because of the new strain from the england the, oh, the new okay. strain yeah. of virus yeah, yeah. Same they as said again. they said it's getting faster infected faster you know? yeah and it's stronger yeah, yeah. That's terrible but anyway, you know, this is, we have to get through and survive this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 And I, I still, you know, dream about we, you know, as, as a jazz musician coming and hanging out together later after yeah. this. Yeah. And we can talk like getting some beer and hey, remember the lockdown? <laughs> I know, I know. We can laugh about it, you know. Yeah, yeah. yeah. This is like a funny story. I really can't wait. Yeah. yeah, it's been a long time. Yeah. Yeah. So, would you um, tell us um, if you have any advice for maybe a jazz musician 
or uh, Bangkok or you know in Thailand right now? Advice? No, I don't have any advice. <laughs> how how are we gonna survive this? You know. It, yeah, well, I think it just need to be resilient for a while. Uh huh. Singapore does it really well, you know. They make sure that we don't go out. Like when we go out, we don't do this. We wear a mask. We are like everything is so you know right. in place. Yeah. So it's very easy to follow. But there is a point, you know. Of it's, course. It's, it's almost like if everybody do it together, things are things get fixed faster. Yeah. Because of course. let's fight it together. It sounds really cheesy, but it really makes sense. Of course. Because that's why it's like one person is doing something, one person is not doing something, and it's like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Japan is a little bit like that right now, so mm -hmm. it's very, mm -hmm. it's painful for me to watch how Japan is doing. And I think Japan will have the the Olympic. I don't know they're gonna cancel that or not. Uh, <laughs> see, this is the problem as well. Nobody knows what's going on, but it doesn't seem like it's fully canceled yet. Yeah, and, and they keep saying that this is, this is gonna happen, but then a lot of people are complaining and they can't. It's the it's really confusing time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Of but I don't think they're accepting tourism at all for Olympics mm -hmm. anyway. So there's no audience. Yeah, mm -hmm. there's of no course. foreign audience. Yeah. yeah, yeah. If but I hope I really don't think it's a good idea. But the athletes, like a jazz musician, um, they need to they perf they waiting to perform. They waiting to compete, and they're waiting. They work so hard. I'm not, of course. <laughs> can understand that 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 pain a little bit and so maybe no audience must be the maybe the best way yeah of course at least, at least you know so you don't waste the four years of like and, Olympic training. yeah i mean and the some of the the person who gonna be in the olympic they they have age limit right if you yeah. pass this kind oh, of yeah, age sure. that's right if you so wait they, for another uh, year, then you cannot participate right. anymore. That's right. That's you are so right about that. Yeah. So I think maybe they should let the athletes do their thing, but maybe commercial, maybe like no commercial audience, like maybe online, yeah. no choice. But Otherwise, on, nothing. Yeah. Yeah. That's so hard. Yeah, man. Yeah. So oh, yeah. Thank you so much for doing this. Oh, no, 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 no. Yeah. My pleasure. Yeah. I'm so happy to see you, you know, after so long. Okay. Okay. So any, any, anyone, anything you want to say? That's yeah. Um, I hope we will all fight this well. And once it finished, I'll be there as soon as, you know, possible. I, I will come to Thailand and please come and visit me wherever I am. Let's play. And uh, I want to be part of, you know, uh, like the hangout or playing. I want to hear you guys. I just want to, you know, be there and, and then like have good time playing music and listening, you know, so yeah. let's fight it All for right. now. Thank you so yeah. much. Yeah. Hang out yeah. online for a while. Yeah. Hang out online. Okay. Thank yeah. you. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Hi, we're going to play a couple of songs for Alone Together Jazz Club in Bangkok. It's my friends, Kenji Nakano on bass. <laughs> Molek Lahua on drums, and my name is Aya Sekine.
Kenji Nakano. Um, I've been good. I've COVID's been a great opportunity to work on new music and um, that sort of thing. So I feel like in a way, even though you know there's been less going on, obviously because of shutdowns with COVID, I've been learning a lot and um, advancing in uh, new ways that I didn't think I, I would if COVID didn't happen. So. so, so, you, so you, so you went to New York. When, when, when did you go to New York? I moved to New York in the summer of 2018. So I've been here for uh, like two and a half years, almost three years. Yeah. Um, so, so like, um, so 18, then, um, then early 2020, everything goes, um, you know, yeah. the pandemic. Would you, would you, um, explain, um, a little bit what happened since then, like from January, 2020? Well, it, it's, it's interesting because in January, 2020, I was, um, I actually did a, a, a tour down to Miami and then to Peru, oh. uh, with, with some of my roommates, um, teaching at a jazz camp in Peru and playing gigs down there. And then, you know, I had other gigs lined up after that, after I got back and then boom, you know, um, March comes and, and COVID shuts everything down. So since then, um, I've, I've, I've gotten a lot better at um, recording and producing like on a computer. So now I feel like um, I, I have a lot more freedom in terms of uh, recording or editing sounds, uh, you know, because before I was just, you know, I would play music live. I was playing bass or guitar or keys, but the whole side of music where I listened to a record and loved the recording, but I didn't know what effects they were using or things like that. Um, I've, I've gotten a lot better at identifying that sort of thing now. So it, it's been this experience of, you know, being at home all the time, but, um, it, in some ways it's, it's been great in terms of seeing the other side of things in terms of not being just a live musician all the time. And, and you're doing okay, right? Um, like all your friends and family around you. Yeah. Um, my friends and family are doing all right. Um, unfortunately I had a great uncle who passed from COVID, um, sadly, but in terms of my, my, um, specific surroundings I, I thankfully have been okay and you did you already got the shot yeah i, I got the johnson and johnson actually before they recalled it <laughs> so i'm but i i, I feel fine and, it, johnson it is, and johnson just one dose right yeah exactly so i got one shot and i was good i had you know a headache for one night but besides that I, it feels good just i feel safer and it's it, it feels good I, have you now you can travel all over the world. <laughs> yeah, hopefully, yeah. Yeah. Um. Uh, about vaccination in Thailand now is very slow, so um, mm. I, I don't know. Maybe next year before we can, you know, get it. Got you. Yeah. So um. So what? What you been up to? Um. I mean, from now on, you have any projects or any gigs coming up? Because before before this, it's like nothing, right? Yeah. Um, I've had some gigs uh, in New York. Um, I've played uh, with this comedy show, actually, uh, playing for comedians, you know, from Saturday Night Live and, and other like Comedy Central and stuff. So that was a cool project. And it was going on this past summer, and um, it kind of died out when things shut down again in the winter. But... Besides that, I'm actually going to Miami in um, in this this weekend, oh. and um, I have some gigs of my original music, so I'm excited to debut a lot of the songs I've been writing. I've been, um, you know, in most of my life I've been a bass player, and I still am a bass player, but um, I, I've been writing a lot of songs that have lyrics and, and singing, because I, I, I love songs that have lyrics, and lyrics captivate me, so... Um, I'm actually going to be debuting a lot of my songs in Miami um, at Lognop. I'm sure you you know Lognop and uh, a couple other venues. So I'm, I'm really looking forward to that. 
so now traveling in in the state is okay now yeah it, it's it's okay I, i'm going down with my girlfriend and we're both vaccinated and as you know florida is very um they, they, they don't really care about rules in florida you know so <laughs> yes I, as you I, see I, people I, on the beach <laughs> yeah exactly so I, I i think this whole time miami's been pretty open um whereas you know in in new york you know Everyone, you know, wears masks. It's pretty respectful of the disease and stuff. But Miami, a lot of people, people you know, just still have going. fun, man. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, I asked you to um, maybe give us some of your performance video. Do you, um, would you like my taking um, talking about it? Yeah. Sure. Um, I, I have two songs that I'm I'm singing and, and playing. Um, the first song is "Wherever I Go." It's a song about being from a country and or the country, as in terms of a small town and, and nature and that sort of thing. And you know, I, I grew up in this place called Ellensburg, Washington, which is a small town about two hours away from Seattle, and. You know, it's it's really quiet there. I you know I would have my window open at night and hear coyotes. Um, you know, I I got used to seeing bald eagles all the time and different you know wildlife. So, but then from there I I, I moved to Miami for music school and that's where I met you, and that was a complete scene change of you know big city, um, lots of concrete, you know, no mountains or anything. Um, and I, I really love that I lived in Miami, and I'm I'm super glad that I did. But a after moving away from a town like that, it's hard to move back, especially being a musician. You know, I, I there's no music career for me there. You know, but at the same time, I really appreciate the lessons I learned there and the um, the beauty of nature specifically, and taking that wherever I go. And I also talk about. Uh, my mom, you know, gave me a, a home growing up in the song, and I'm going to take that feeling wherever I go, even though I'm not home anymore. So I feel like um, it's just a song of of having your roots, but, you know, taking your roots wherever you go. And then the next song is called Before You Go, and that's a song I wrote in the past couple of weeks. And that song is sort of going along with the themes of renewal in COVID. I feel like a lot of people maybe found new parts of their identity or pursued dreams that they didn't have the time to or the opportunities to before. So um, it's, it's this idea where you're growing away from somebody, but that's okay. And, you know, you still love them and appreciate them, even though you're on separate paths. And, and that's okay. So it's, it's the two songs that I'm performing are having your roots and then also expanding on your roots and being okay with, with letting go. So it's, it's combination of, of what you have and where you're going. Man, looking forward to, to see the video. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay. So, um, uh, so after the, this pandemic happened since, um, last year, um, would you mind sharing your, um, your comments about um, you know with with your fellow jazz musician that how should we look at it how should we deal with it you still there um, it, it cut out for a second bit. yeah I, I cannot see you yeah you're back now okay, yeah yes uh, ask that again I, it cut out so um from from the uh, since the pandemic happens like um, last year from from the beginning of last year, um, would you mind sharing your um, comments or any advice to your fellow jazz musician? You know what should we look at it? What how should we take it? You know. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I think it's important just to to follow the the music you really love. You know, I think. Before the pandemic, I, um, I, I might have been uh, felt like I, I needed to know some sort of certain music or some sort of cer certain thing to um, 
to to make it but but what i found during COVID is having the freedom to truly explore what i want to with no pressure of, of um feeling like i need to know this song or this sort of thing yes i mean if i have a gig and i have to learn this song i'm gonna learn it but at the same time i feel like what's been rewarding for me is just diving to the stuff i really love so i, I would say just you know use this time to find the records you really love and you know dive deep you know I, i've talked to older uh, musicians you know from 50 years ago growing up when they had vinyls they only had five or ten albums but they listened to those five or ten albums a so hundred times yeah so they so, can sing all the solo yeah 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 so, so don't be afraid to only pick a few things that you really love and and dive deep you know don't feel like you need to know a thousand songs you know it's better to know that maybe 20 songs amazingly than a hundred songs barely you know so you use use this time to dive deep in the music you truly love yeah that's a good yeah that's a good one all right bob thank you so much yeah yeah thank- we existed before we took our first breath I won't die many times Before I'm laid to rest Mama gave me a gift A gift called home I am taking that if you learn Wherever I go Through the burning sun In the light of the moon Through the coming storm I'm walking back to you Though I know it's love This has to be more It is my feeling Mama gave me a gift, 
Magical or something, you know. So, so tell me about um your experience since the COVID last year, since it started. Yeah, well, I mean, we went, we were in lockdown for quite a few months, and then you know, our because our government was so strict about everything, we managed to kind of really keep COVID really at bay, and um, we started opening up. Believe it or not, like late July last year, we started actually doing performances, oh. limited uh, capacity crowds. But um, we were doing performances. I actually released an album uh, in August last year uh, live. Um, so that that came out uh, with, with featuring uh, students from the Western Australian Academy of Performing Arts over here, which is a place where I where I teach, mm -hmm. uh, adjunct lecturer. And um, so you know we had there was a Perth International Jazz there was a Perth Jazz Festival. It wasn't international. It was mm -hmm. local artists. But we have uh, very strong, as you you probably are, more, are aware, there's many strong. Uh, players coming out of Western Australia, uh, out of Perth. So we had a festival. Um, we had, I mean, for me, we it, it was it was challenging in that we were doing a teaching online uh, with the university teaching. Do you teach at a university as yeah, well? Yeah, in, yeah, yeah. yeah. So were you doing online teaching? Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
Yeah, so so you know that that is different, <laughs> very different. Um, uh, for us, it's kind of luck because um, in the middle of semester, we still um, the government allow us to do uh, on-site teaching, but I see. We just recently been online teaching recently because of you know the third wave. But uh, yeah. the third wave happened. We already have the final exams and you know all this um, right ensemble already finished. Done, yeah. done, yeah. Because the hardest, yeah. I think, is the ensemble, you know. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> I mean, I, I think, I mean, I really feel, I really feel for the students, you know, especially yeah. the first year students, because like in in Australia, their first semester was was online. It mm. wasn't even at campus. They mm. had three weeks, three weeks of campus tuition, and then that was it. Mm -hmm. So I really feel like you miss out, you know, when you don't, when you're not playing with people in the same room, you don't get that. There's so many intangible oh, things going on when oh. you're learning how to play jazz, especially and interact, and yeah. you can't get that from playing playing the play along. You no. know what I mean? It's totally no. different. No. So I really feel for those students. So we, we definitely had to you know make compromises, and I think our um our faculty in Western Australia did a really good job. They put together uh, some play along uh, tracks, so you can have you know the full band multi track recording. And you can mute in yeah. the, the different instruments kind of thing um so at least the students had an opportunity to still play get to know the core ensemble we have like a, mm -hmm. a repertoire ensemble where you learn chord you know standards mm -hmm. so they could still kind of play and learn things which was good but you definitely can tell that when i hear them play as an ensemble they haven't had that experience just to lock in and groove and 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 understand texture and dynamics and balance yeah. That stuff kind of is, is very much implicit in jazz. It's not something you necessarily are going to talk at one hour about. Mm -hmm. You're going to play it. You're going to use common sense and figure it out as you play. So yeah. I think that's the big thing that, that got missed mm -hmm. uh, to me. You know, So, man, it's been challenging. I tried to really take the time to take care of some projects and do some things I wanted to do for a long time, like set up a drum recording studio at my house. Mm -hmm. um, I've really been wanting to do this for a long time. And so I've really got that to a really good level now. That's mm -hmm. sounding really great. And, it, you know, I did some acoustic treatment, things like that. Yeah. Got some more microphones and all the stuff you need to do to try, try to get a sound happening. Mm -hmm. So I did that. I've been doing a lot of composing. I'm doing a live recording in September here with the WAPA students. Mm -hmm. With the, I, I founded the Afro Peruvian Ensemble at WAPA in 2017. Mm -hmm. So I have an Afro Peruvian group. Uh, also, I'm working with the Jazz Vocal Ensemble. So I'm writing music for like, probably like about a 10 piece band plus 18 singers. So that's going to happen in September. Wow. So I've been busy kind of writing music and then and then freelance work, you know, working as a, as a drummer, you know, just working, doing gigs with the Perth Symphony Orchestra. They do kind of concerts involving classical music and then pop music with a full orchestra. Kind of like the Henry Mancini Institute. Yeah. I want to say kind of similar. Yeah. yeah. Um, just always, I always love. Um, and then jazz, you know, jazz performances, jazz recordings, um, things like that. And um, so I feel, honestly, I feel like I haven't got a lot to complain about. Yeah. I, 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 I saw, you know I it sounds like you have a lot in your. In yeah. 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 Oh yeah, man. But it's challenging because the thing that's challenging for me is the uncertainty in the future of yeah. not knowing when is a lockdown like you know on friday we got told there's a lockdown on the weekend so that just happened instantly you mm. know my wife is, is has some opportunities to travel to do some performances very soon mm -hmm. but we're not sure about the safety of the whole situation at hand mm -hmm. and you know what's going to happen in a day or two days we kind of it's kind of difficult to plan so mm -hmm. like in terms of like touring for me i you know before this before these couple of years i was doing a lot of um in, uh, traveling touring Forming around, yeah, traveling around Australia, and and now I, I don't want to risk the. I, I even actually I had two gigs, uh, two uh, um, opportunities last year, which I had to cancel two separate opportunities mm -hmm. to travel because because of COVID, and mm -hmm. I don't want to necessarily rebook that now because I I don't really know, you know, yeah, until I think until the vaccination situation is really handled, mm -hmm. everything feels very very fluid to me and and kind of risky, it'd be risky, you know, so. Yeah. It's, it's a weird time, Com, um, psychologically. It's definitely, a, I, I think more than anything, I tried to kind of focus in on things I wanted to do and achieve that maybe I wouldn't normally. That, that's that been one of the saving factors for me, uh, just in terms of mental health, you know? Yeah. Yeah, I understand. Yeah. It's, it's hard for everyone. Yeah. 
So, yeah, um, it's, yeah. It's, it is. I mean, I, I know, you know, speaking to people, you know, back in Miami and speaking to people in New York and it's, yeah, I, you know, I, I, I talked to Martin and he, he mentions the same thing, you know? Yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. yeah. But, um, anyway, he, uh, everyone also said that this is the time to, you know, be creative and do whatever you miss to do, you know, like, something that yeah, you so. want to do for a long time, you know, wanted to do for a long time. I also think like on that point, I think it's, I think it's actually an interesting time for people to think about what they want to be doing maybe in five, 10 years, yeah. especially people, especially people who are kind of mid career and really thinking about, I think the big question is, are you happy with, mm-hmm. with your life set up with the setup of your life? Are you happy? Mm-hmm. And, and so I've been thinking a lot about that and, happiness is something obviously it's not something that you just kind of that falls in your lap i think it's something you earn mm-hmm. um i think it's something you have to plan towards to to do things that make you feel happy and be around people that make you feel good mm-hmm. um but i've been thinking a lot about that you know i'm not talking about myself changing careers but maybe like upskilling and adding yeah. skills to what i have to make myself more diverse yeah diversified yeah. um you know because in doing that you might find something like that might end up being a life changing um, opportunity for you. You know, you might, you might, you might lock in with something and go, wow, I really love this one thing and I have talent for it. I want to pursue this, which was a little bit like something you might not have expected initially. Mm-hmm. So that's, I can see, I can see maybe opportunity, you yeah. know, trying to think about that, you know, um, like Einstein would say quotes like that, you know, yeah. in, inside of difficult, there's an opportune, opportune moment sort of thing there, Poss- yeah. possibility. Yeah. So um, I was um, uh, I was asked you to give us some footage of your playing. Would you yeah. would you mind talking about it? Which one you're gonna give us? Sure. Well, uh, my band is the Daniel Sussinger Afro Peruvian Jazz Group. Mm-hmm. Um, I formed my band in 2011 in Miami. Initially, with students from University of Miami Frost School of Music, and then I moved back to Australia, 2013, and then I formed a a working band here and we did a recording uh in 2018 called spark and i've done quite a bit of touring with that band so there's a few tracks of that band which uh which i've which are from spark which were filmed professionally in the studio live with the audience and so i've got a few tracks of that band uh there's a song um called uh la flor de la canela which is actually uh a song written by a great Peruvian uh, musician called Chabuca Granda mm-hmm. and she is one of the um, uh, kind of most important uh, musicians in, in Peruvian music and so there's a song called La Flor de la Canela which she wrote which is kind of a almost like an anthem uh, for Peruvian people and so I, I arranged the song and adapted it for um, my group mm-hmm. so there's that track which I which I'm really proud of um, which I'm happy to, yeah, happy to share with, with you and, and everybody, you know, of course. So yeah, that, that's one. And, and there's, there's music also from my new album called The Recipe, which is live again, which is with a, with a mini big band. I formed a band with um, like six horns, vocal, rhythm section, and eight percussionists, and I'm playing drums. Cool. And so that came out, that's the one that came out last year. So I have a video of that band as well uh, called The Recipe. That's the song called The Recipe. All right. Um, yeah, those the couple tracks there. I'm happy to you know contribute, of course. All right. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So we don't have a lot of time. Um, I'll let's ask you this. So since the pandemic happened, you know, do you have any um thought or comments that you want to share to your fellow jazz musician in Thailand? Like, how should we look at it? How should we deal with it? You know. Um. You know, I have, I've spent a little bit of time in Thailand, not a whole lot. Mm-hmm. Um, I know that from my experience, the Thai people are beautiful people, very humble. Um, I think that it's worthwhile thinking about, if in terms of musicians, thinking really carefully, thinking carefully about your goals and trying to clarify what you want to do. Um, this may take more than a year. This may mm-hmm. take a couple of years, perhaps. But I think it's good to try and formulate a plan. And mm-hmm. I think it's good to talk to other people like you who've mm-hmm. got experience internationally. There's such a, um, it's so different. 
you know, when you step out of your comfort area, when you step out of your city and you go somewhere else and it's just you, uh, when you're figuring, trying to figure things out, you learn a lot. And I think there's a lot to share for people like us who have done that, who, for instance, went to the United States, there's a lot to share. And I think that, I think that people shouldn't be afraid to kind of look to people like you as a resource mm -hmm. in helping them to understand what they want. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I would say maybe that would be advice. Mm -hmm. um, and I think, I think probably uh, the other, the other one is just to, um, you know, listen to, listen to music you enjoy and try and figure out why you enjoy it. What is it about that music you like? Write that down and then try and, think of ways to integrate integrate that into what you do as a musician i yeah. think that could be useful yeah great comments get great advice you know <laughs> all right thank you so much daniel no worries Com. it's very very lovely to see you and yeah, um, yeah man, all, all the best to you your family and everybody over there yeah you take care hopefully we will see each other yeah. sometime in the future in person yeah and be safe okay say hi thank to you. everyone for me <laughs> Yes.
how about you? Um, could you um, tell us about your experience since the pandemic started last year on since like, I think that January, February last year, what happened with your gigs and work? Yeah, I mean, last year was, was horrible. I mean, uh, everywhere was, but like Korea suffered uh, harshly. Uh, I mean, for, for instance, in my case, uh, in the early last year, around like, uh, I had a, like a tour booked in Europe and uh, I was about to go in March. And at that time, the world was okay, kinda. Uh, but but Korea like the the number of infection like it, it like soared mm -hmm. and uh, the airline that I booked my uh, flight ticket at uh, they just canceled my ticket that like without any notice and they just canceled it and they just told me oh you you cannot fly uh, from Korea outbound because you know because of the infection and stuff so I was really offended <laughs> at that time but. Um, uh, and, and the gig was canceled and the tour, uh, it didn't happen. But soon after, like in April, like it started spreading like worldwide and it was really harsh, right? But, but Korea suffered a lot uh, in the beginning, especially because it was so close to China and stuff. Um, it got a little better towards the end of the year last year. And I mean, uh, around the fall, it was okay. But towards the end, it was like, you know, rising again. And in the beginning of the year, uh, you know, it calmed down a little bit, but like every, everybody, you know, like they got relaxed and, and <laughs> it's just like rising again. Oh man. So it's like, uh, it, it never ends. I don't think it's uh, like, like if, even uh, those like clean countries, right. They, they can travel, they cannot, you know, get people from other like abroad inside their own country. So it's like, it's, it's not, Everyone is not free until everyone is free, I guess. Yeah, yeah. But Korea, it's, uh, it's doing okay. It's okay, but uh, still the economy, especially for musicians and freelancers, it's, uh, it's really harsh. Did um, government help you in any way? Yeah, I mean, a uh, um, few, a few support from the government, but it's, it's never enough. Um, I mean, for... Uh, for the businesses that that were shut down because of the the new policies that was uh, you know set by the government, they they uh, got a little bit of compensation, mm -hmm. um, but musicians not really. Um, you know the government is trying to create jobs and stuff, but it's not it's not working well. I don't think, and so a lot of people around me, you know, uh, including myself, we are doing a lot of like a side hustles and stuff. Because there's no gig um, recording sessions, like rarely. Um, but basically in Korea, it's, it's, it's funny uh, because not more than five people can be in the same place at the same time. Mm -hmm. uh, but, you know, if you uh, public transportation is a different story. But if you uh, were to have like offline meeting with like, uh, you know, fellow musicians or or. Um, mm, any any projects is really hard yeah so it's uh it's been like that for for many months and it's not getting better mm -hmm. <laughs> how about your um how about a vaccine in 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 south korea what's what what's is the progress right now oh vaccine is uh uh the the rate of vaccination is is really low because uh we weren't successful in in getting the vaccine in the first place and also, uh, there's a lot of production going on in, in factories in Korea, but it's all for the for the exporting, uh -huh. not for the domestic use. Yeah, so it's uh, kind of, um, but uh, but recently, I think the government uh, made a deal uh, with uh, Pfizer, I think, uh, and and they say uh, we're getting the vaccines towards the end of the year, I think. Mm -hmm. But until then, it, we're it's still wearing masks. People as in Thailand, I I say. Oh yeah. Oh, they yeah, just try to get fifty million um, people vaccinated by the end of the year. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. 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 I, I mean, we see like uh, on 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 the news um, in the Britain uh, and Israel, I think London and Tel Aviv, like people are like walking around. I mean, as, um, as no all the people from the state that I interviewed them, they are they all of them already got. The vaccine. 
Oh, yes. Okay. Yeah, especially the state in, in the United States now is very yeah. fast to deliver. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, that's good, I think. That's good. Yeah. You know, this, uh, the sooner the better, I think. And uh, like, in, I, I actually talked to one of my friends in India a few days ago. Man, it's, 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 it's horrible there. It's really harsh. Yes. A lot of people are dying. Man, it's it's uh, serious over there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, you talk about the past. Um, let's talk about the future. You have any gigs or any projects coming up? Um, on and off, I would say. Um, the you know, I mean. Musicians, probably not, but uh, like organizations who organize gigs and concerts and stuff, uh, they, ha they have been shut down also for, for a, more than a year now. And so these days they are trying to set up stuff uh, here and there, a little bits and pieces, uh, like especially online concerts. Uh, it's been going on uh, for quite a while now, but then again, I, I guess it's the same for everyone. Uh, like the, the income stream is, is, is uh, the biggest problem. It's uh, online concerts and, and uh, contents making. It's not creating any revenue. So uh, it's, really, it's really hard. But uh, yeah, recording sessions. Well, there, there, there's a few projects going on for me. <laughs> and it's, uh, but not, not, I wouldn't say it's like, uh, it's, it's never the same. <laughs> but gigs no 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 gigs uh, almost no gigs i mean uh maybe a couple a month mm -hmm. um but it's all like um uh there there was one i played a few weeks ago uh we played without the audience <laughs> no one was watching and just like videos in front of us um like uh, tv programs also like uh, just just shooting a camera crew uh and the, the musicians mm -hmm. and that's it no, no audience. Um, yeah, I guess, but I guess it's the same, same everywhere. Um, I, I heard some Korean companies, they are trying to set up like um, uh, online uh, concert platforms. Um, I don't know when it's gonna take off, but, but I heard uh, the news that, you know, trying to, like, like YouTube, like um, if you see something and you pay to enter and see the contents and, and concerts and stuff, but it's not active yet. I think, mm -hmm. but hopefully someday. <laughs> yeah, so we miss playing music, man. It's like, if we, if oh, you know, like music, yeah, uh, yeah tell hearing and play, make some sound, you know. <laughs> we cannot do that. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. The most, most, the most I play is here at school. Uh, you know, uh, for my students. <laughs> So I mean it's it's okay, but it's it's different from having a gig. Um, I'm, I ask you to give us some of your video footage. Do you um, would you um speak about it? Do you have uh, any explanation? Oh sure, yeah. Actually, um, I I uh, recorded a piece with a jazz singer. Um, I've been I've been playing with her uh, quite a lot. A uh, couple of years, until a couple of years ago, <clears throat> and uh, we came up with. Uh, I, I, actually, this was designed for you, especially. Um, uh, it's like a, like a fusion ish stuff. We just added a little bit of jazz. It's like a three minute song. Um, it's in the production. We we recorded yesterday, and uh, I'm gonna go home tonight and record my part, and you know shoot the video and stuff, and I'm gonna edit it and send it to you very soon. <laughs> All right. All right, man. Okay, um, last question. Um, since the, um, you know, since the beginning of the pandemic until now, do you have, you know, any comments or anything to say to your fellow jazz musician? Like, how should we deal with it? Yeah, I mean, everyone like, uh, is struggling, I, I, I believe, uh, unless you had a lot of savings <laughs> in the first place. But uh, I guess we, uh, I mean, we don't know when, but, but I, I believe there is a, you know, um, there will be the end of the ton tunnel coming up uh, sometime, uh, hopefully soon. Um, but uh, like I said, we see like London and Tel Aviv, like people walking around freely and, 
and you know I think there's a hope and uh, also I think it's a it's a it's a great not great but it's a good time for us to uh, think about the future also because <clears throat> uh, what we I mean for myself what I have been um, taking for granted for, for, for example like going to a gig or to a show uh, to a recording session it became um, it uh, I mean it became it, it, it's different now and I got to uh, think a lot about music and the relationships that I had uh, in prior to, to the pandemic and it was such a precious thing but I don't think I ever appreciated it enough so uh, it, it gave me a new perspective, I think. Uh, and also for the uh, fellow musicians, I think it's a good chance for us to think about our music too. Mm. And uh, you know, the new direction that, that the music is going and the industry as a whole uh, is going towards a, a definitely a different direction than before. So I think it's a good time for us to con contemplate and think about it. Um, we don't know what's coming up. No one knows, but... but uh, I think uh, it's it's a uh, it's a good time for us to be prepared, also. And uh, I, I noticed recently a lot of my friends uh, they are recording new albums. Uh, it's it's actually really good stuff. Uh, people had nothing to do for the past year, and uh, now they are coming up with new stuff, new music, uh, which is actually very different from you know what they had been doing. Yeah. So it's a good start, I think. Um, it's a good change. Yeah, good one. Okay. Thank you so much, Eka. Thank you so much for having me.